The Sustainable Built Environment National Research Centre is a unique blend of industry, government and research partners who come together delivering applied research for Australian industry. This CRC is a national effort. It's a key enabler for carbon reductions in buildings and cities. Carbon Structural Adjustment is a research project about how to mainstream the reduction of carbon in a way that improves our economy in terms of its productivity and competitiveness. It's funded by the SBE and the CRC in Low Carbon Living and we have a wonderful team who will take you through what we've been doing. With the world's leaders now creating ambitious targets for climate change, this is going to present amazing opportunities for the built environment sector in Australia over the next 15 years. We're going to need to quickly move from amazing showcases of you know, green buildings and, and really lighthouse projects that are showing the world how to be more sustainable and transition that into how to update the structures of our economy. How do we change our, our building codes? How do we change our procurement practices? How do we change our higher education, accreditation? Starting to think about the structures that make our amazing economy function and think about where are the points in those structures that we need to really um, think about and talk to the people involved in collaboration with business and industry and universities. How can we really harness this opportunity of reducing greenhouse gas emissions in the world and providing services and products um, um, long into the future. When you think about the nature of changes that are needed in the economy for us to really make uh, a low carbon growth pattern uh, the norm, it's very important to work with large companies who are able to showcase the projects and show, show how they can lower costs and actually change their whole future and that then can become the norm for the rest of the industry. Changing Australia's energy mix is probably the biggest challenge that we have towards uh, building the infrastructure for a low carbon future. And one of the important things there is making use of the natural resources and the natural assets that Australia has got. The sun, the waves, the wind. We have a fantastic opportunity to be able to make renewable energy at low cost here in Australia. One very good demonstration project that we've uh, funded has been a wave energy project in Western Australia, which really has the potential to provide more than half of Australia's energy around our coastline. Most of our cities around our coastline. So really being able to fund these uh, new technologies, these demonstration projects, and show how they can lower costs and also produce the energy that we need in a, a way which is very sympathetic to uh, our natural assets. What we've done in this project is to create what we call the Carbon Structural Adjustment Roadmap and it provides a playbook on how to strategically work with across society, so through a whole of society approach. And we also need to really enrol people in those areas, in the, the, the exciting opportunities that come from changing these structures to transition our economy in, in the low carbon direction. And one of the leading examples of how to do that is comes from the Infrastructure Sustainability Council of Australia, which has created an infrastructure sustainability rating tool, which I actually think will be a, a game changer worldwide. The strategy that they've used to create the tool is to work with industry, to work with universities, to work with government agencies, to develop the criteria that we assess the sustainability of infrastructure projects. And not only the criteria, but the evidence performance requirements underneath it. The Infrastructure Sustainability Rating Tool was launched, launched in the middle of 2012. Uh, and since that time, we've had eight certified ratings. We've got another 26 registered for a rating. So currently going through the rating process. Uh, of that uh, total capital value in Australian dollars is 40 billion. We have a pipeline of another eight that will be registering by the end of this year. Total capital value probably in the range of 10 to 15 billion. So to give you an example then in that context is that out of the certified, the eight certified ratings was the Gold Coast Light Rail Project Stage 1. And what was exciting is that they actually have demonstrated that they secured a 14 million, that's 14 million dollar saving through smart sustainability design decision making that led to construction savings. One of the early movers was Northwest Rail Link, where the client, Transport for New South Wales, actually mandated and included it in the contract requirements, where they will have to achieve a design and then as-built rating of at least 65. If you go to 70, 
then you will actually get a financial bonus out of that. In West Connex, which is one of the biggest projects in Australia, the $12 billion road project, where only stage one is progressing right now, but all the other stages will progress over time. The whole project is going for an IS rating, as well as stage one. Uh, we're seeing tremendous uh, attraction um, in the context of major projects with, uh, with uh, South Australia, with the Torrance to Torrance project, but also with Main Roads, WA and other key stakeholders in Western Australia with major projects. So the Gateway project, which just secured a design rating, excitingly, they will now be going for their as-built rating. They're all pretty big projects, but you can see the level of take-up. Some of the largest infrastructure projects in Australia now have say a 65 points out of 100 or a 70 points out of 100 in the contract which means the designers and the suppliers are all now thinking about how can we achieve those sustainability outcomes some of which are related to low carbon. One of the leading examples that we're working on is with Urban Growth New South Wales who are working with the CRC for Low Carbon Living and the Sustainable Built Environment National Research Centre to understand how to bring some of that advancement into their tendering process. So we're talking with suppliers and contractors that work with the department and looking at what we're calling their low carbon readiness. So how, how ready are they to deliver low carbon solutions? So we can make sure that at least that level right now is being harnessed in these tenders and then we can start to advise on how to work with industry and government to increase the level of readiness. So over time, our suppliers and our concrete plants and our material suppliers and our engineering designers and our architects can start to transition to bringing more and more of the sustainability and the low carbon solutions into the structures so we can go from sort of one or two lighthouse projects to affecting all of the projects that, that are done in the future to really present that leadership case for the world. Each of our projects must have a plan that targets the reduction of waste and the efficient use of resources. So by targeting sustainable resource use coupled with our continued commitment to safety, community enrichment and positive outcomes in an environmental, economic and social sense means that we're really targeting sustainability in all of the projects that we undertake. What we're interested in is where research can actually achieve a lower carbon outcome and that's why we're very much driven by industry and by, by governments that have projects but they need a research input to achieve that lower carbon outcome. The research aspect is what is the language, how should that be um, described and is it realistic? Are the supply chains able to deliver those lower carbon products into the development project? The land corporations are driving this, they have an objective of a lower carbon development. Then we, uh, with our bank of researchers across Australia, are there to try and assist them to achieve that objective. So as you can see from the amazing people that we've been talking to, there really is an enormous opportunity here in Australia. Across all the sectors in the built environment, there's innovations in technology that Meg was talking about. Some real money going into demonstration projects that's showing us how we can achieve economic benefits, we can, we can help in, in agriculture, in water and energy. Some amazing projects that deliver those low carbon outcomes that we need and, and strengthen that industry. Um, we've heard from Anthony talking about how the industry is organising itself. How can we communicate and understand what sustainability means in our infrastructure projects in the built environment and be able to benchmark that for performance, start to understand where we can improve things, communicate where things are strong and start to share that knowledge amongst ourselves. Um, we heard from, from Robert Hill from the CRC saying it's really important that we work with industry and that we work with government and the researchers from the university sector to bring it all together because we've really got a big, a big challenge ahead of us. 15 years isn't very long to think about how to change structures and some of these structures have been in place for quite a long time. So we're going to need all the ingenuity we can gather, all the excitement and enthusiasm we can garner to bring our knowledge together and really make this country an amazing landmark for the rest of the world on how we can achieve low carbon outcomes and just be an amazing place to live.